what's up guys, it's Track, and remember when we were talking about the Game Face Prime Blaster? Well, uh, I guess the company got tired of us thinking about it and speculating about it and decided to just let us talk about it. So, all right, so uh, this is the blaster itself, and this one is for sale, I believe, right now. I'll throw links in the description box down below. But this is the Game Face Prime, and uh, aren't you guys just thrilled? It's the correct color. So I want to talk about the box briefly. Over here we have ages 14 and up, which means that they're targeting the correct demographic. Over here it says spring compression, which is uh, the power source and the velocity they're claiming is 130 FPS, which isn't stellar like crazy knock your socks off performance, but for an out of the box blaster is actually quite impressive. When you consider that elite standard is roughly 70 FPS, that's almost two times as powerful as your average Hasbro uh, offering. Now, over here we've got high cap magazine. Of course, their definition of high cap is 15 rounds. This is the standard Jet Katana magazine. And then if you look at the box, uh, on the back, it definitely says down here, and you're gonna have to zoom in on that guy. Um, designed by Jet Blaster, so this is in fact a, uh, a reimagining, a reiteration, a reshelling of the CETA platform for a North American audience, distributed by a North American company, which, uh, in my admittedly slightly biased opinion, has been nothing but professional and polite thus far. So, uh, coming in the back, we've got a takedown system. Pins, all very standard. We've got an adjustable stock. This one looks pretty minimalist. And then we've got an upper, a lower, uh, some springs, a plunger, a bolt sled. This is very retaliator in design. Then we've got a barrel with a zero attached to the front of it. We'll have to open this up and see if it's removable or not. Now, uh, speaking of opening it up, all right, so your 85 bones gets you uh, one blaster, mostly assembled. One barrel, which appears to be metal in a plastic sleeve with a zero attached. Is the zero removable? Well, certainly not easily. Um, so accuracy comes by default at a slight cost to FPS. That's just how scar barrels work. Uh, the zero, of course, being Jet's uh, pseudo proprietary take on the scar system. Then we've got one Katana magazine, what appear to be exactly 14 darts in a little baggie, and then the one that you saw on the display, as well as some paperwork explaining roughly how to assemble this guy, uh, some safety and warning information, uh, and then, of course, information about how its onboard safety works, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. Well, let's see how long it takes to assemble. All right, so uh, a few things that we need to talk about on the Game Face Prime. First off, still a little bit of a, a walk in here. Uh, nothing to do about that, no real issue. Then you've got no uh, feed lips, so this has got to be primed all the way back so that that'll come out. Of course, if you take a genuine InStrike style magazine, pull the breech all the way back, throw that home, it's gonna chamber and release more or less clean. The issue that you're gonna run into is that this pusher system is designed only for half darts. This won't chamber the dart, obviously. So uh, that's a little unfortunate. However, you're gonna throw in your katana adapter, then you're gonna throw in your katana magazine, prime forward, and fire, and it's actually uh, pretty snappy, pretty responsive. So the overall design of this is kind of this very light gray Game Face logo here with black print. Then you've got a red body. This is also available in blue. We'll talk more about that later. Watch to the end of the video. On this side, obviously, you've got the same clean sort of logos, and then over here it says the Prime. Overall, pretty good looking blaster. Adjustable stock back here, although this is about as inexpensive as I can imagine a, uh, a butt stock getting. There's no actual switch here. We're just using the uh, the mechanical resistance of the plastic to extend that. Does that mean it's gonna be sturdy? Actually, uh, yes it does. That's pretty tough. Now, it's also super slick, so it kinda walks up your shoulder, particularly if you're wearing clothing. However, uh, not bad. Uh, definitely a good cost-saving effort. Then we've got genuine M-lock up front, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and the priming grip being a slightly uh, angled AFG is pretty comfortable overall. I actually like that it's got this little uh, 
tail on it. It makes it really nice, pretty comfortable. I kind of wish that this had one too. Overall, grip is a good size. Trigger well is nice. This is a pretty comfortable uh, Ambi mag release. Blaster does have a safety. Right now, this is no dart. Pushing it on this side leaves you with a dart. Interestingly enough, these blasters are serialized. I don't know how many serial numbers there are. I have no idea who has serial number one, but it would appear that my review model is serial number five with a lot of zeros behind it. This also tells us that this is coming from Game Face, which happens to also be Crossman. They're made in China. So uh, we've got J, our model reference number is GFJBR. I'm assuming that that's Game Face Jet Blaster R. <laughs> As far as the overall plastic quality goes, Blaster actually feels pretty good. Picatinny is completely flush. The uh, parts mate together very nicely. Now you do have jet internals in here. I'm not sure which Alpha, Bravo, Omni, Omega this is of theirs explicitly. I know that it's half dart proprietary. I know that it's achieving a sealed breach all the way throughout. And when we put it over the chronograph, we'll find out if it gets those 130 specs that it's claiming to. You've got a ring down here that you could use to throw this one on a single point if you were of interest. And then and one thing that I wish both uh, Dart Zone and Jet, and as a consequence, I suppose Game Face would stop doing, these keyring pulls uh, are just... This is like my one complaint about my Pro, it's my one complaint about uh, this platform, it's a little obnoxious. Now if you prime the blaster, You'll note that this does not have slam fire. There's just no way that this breach could operate with that system explicitly being a closed breach system and how it does function. Uh, priming it back, dropping the magazine, priming it forward, depriming it by firing or dry firing. Now I think this one, you can deprime it from the back to the front, which I would highly recommend. You can in fact disassemble this guy the same way that the CETA comes down, the same way that the DZP comes down. The bolt sled has two of these silver anodized thumb screws in it, which attach to admittedly um, nice looking, but certainly not anodized priming bars. These are actually pretty, pretty chunky, pretty sturdy uh, thumb screws as well. Then you yoink both pins, one here and one here. And if you're the kind of person that likes to or needs to do field maintenance or strip your blaster that way, the whole thing comes down like that. Your bolt sled comes out as well. It's nice and slimy. The lubrication from the factory looks pretty good. And then you've also got a double O-ring system here ensuring a pretty good seal. Spring Prime is pretty comfortable, all things considered. Uh, it's a little floppy at the front there, but overall very consistent, very comfortable. This gives you a really good look at the kind of quality of plastic that we're dealing with. Again, uh, very similar to Hasbro, very similar to the Dark Zone Pro. Feels pretty good, feels like a premium product, which for an out-of-the-box blaster delivering this kind of FPS, it should feel more like sporting equipment and less like a proverbial toy. Reassembly is going to be a little bit tricky depending upon how familiar you are with systems like this. I find that it's easier to throw the bolt sled in first, line that up like that, then line these up. And this is kind of difficult to do just eyeballing it. But that goes in like that. Throw the pins back home. One there. One in this hole, I think. Easy to get them confused with the screw ports. Then uh, make absolutely sure that your priming bars are aligned with your bolt sled and throw these guys home. A little bit of anodizing would go a long way here, but uh, now's where we get to talk about the cool part. This guy comes in at only 85 United States dollars, which considering this space isn't a terrible ton of scratch. Like that's an entry level primary out of the box that gets you up and running, certainly much hotter than anybody using uh, stock class blasters and performing just under the threshold for super stock. Honestly, 130 would be perfect for HVZ, but we'll talk more about that after we take it downstairs and throw it over the magical number machine. Let's go.
one more thing that I wanted to point out, if you check out this ammo here and it focuses real quick, they're calling this Game Face Quick Dart TM trademark. Interestingly enough, in Singapore, we call it Quick Flag. In the UK, they call it, I think, Speedball, uh, but they use Rival for it explicitly. Shout out to my friends over at Foam Dart Thunder. In the United States, we call it a litany of different things because it's all really just paintball derivative anyway, right guys? But uh, interesting that they have uh, trademarked a name for what can only be a game, which would be pretty cool if there was a tournament. Da -da 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 -da. I'm just saying guys, hit me up, stay in touch. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this open. This is the same darts that came with the blaster. They come in a hundred pack jar here. The jar is actually pretty convenient. I think that it would be great for storing springs and screws and odds and ends later on. It's certainly a lot nicer than uh, the hypothetical and typical little baggie. Now, uh, if you guys want me to do an exhaustive dart test on these, particularly versus pro darts, I think that that could be meaningful and exciting, but you gotta let me know. You gotta come in, you gotta throw a thumbs up on this video so that I crack these guys open and I put them through uh, their entire paces. If you're interested in competitive nerf, the ammo is just as important as the blasters. Uh, let's go ahead and put this guy over the chronograph, then we'll put a few down range. And I know that you guys are sticking around to the end of the video because I got something pretty cool to share with you. But uh, I just wanted to point out one more time that this is a pretty comfortable ergonomic setup considering that it's 85 bucks, the AFG is comfy, the stock is not bad, the overall pop pick at any rail has become the standard. It turns out that in a world where everybody has two arms and shoulders, this is a pretty convenient way to set up a blasting toy. Uh, no optics, we're just gonna throw a few over. 149, definitely hotter than 130. 154. 126, 141, 138, 130, 108, 142, 153, 153. So this is either good or bad news depending upon how you wanna play with your Game Face Prime. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I think that this is great news. I love that companies' blasters are capable of performing over the stated FPS. That means that theoretically you shouldn't be disappointed. Now, I do wanna point out as someone who went to school for engineering that uh, <laughs> the statistics there have a pretty wide spread. That said, if you remove a couple of the outliers, it's not that bad. And ultimately, while it is shooting hot and probably would not be allowed in an HVZ like End War, it's quick takedown. You could always swap the spring to something a little softer, a little lighter. Now, uh, let's just take a look here at our reserves. We've got five. Let's put them down range and see what some practical real world nerfing would look like. So, shouldered, again, that tree down there is about 80, 85 feet away, depending upon how close to the house I am standing at any given time. Let's pretend that somebody's in cover behind it and we're trying to spook them into staying there. We've got five shots, they're bunkered and Miss, miss, that one will hit. Okay, so I think that once you get this guy dialed in, it's definitely shooting straight. It's actually really, really solid. This is pretty good performance. I wanna put a couple more down range now that I'm starting to get it dialed in. I was pulling right at first and that might just legitimately be a muscle memory thing from uh, years and years of NIC battle. Now, I do wanna point out that my katanas are original Gen 1 katanas and these katana magazines, which I don't even think are technically being called katana magazines, have slightly sharp sharper beveling and edges. This is a little bit sharper, this is a little bit cleaner. We still have this wide open window in the magazine itself, but uh, the assembly looks solid and clean, which uh, is, is to be expected. Now, these are Omni, which is really interesting. Uh, I still haven't decided, and I want you guys to comment down below. Let me know, is a magazine that can be loaded feasibly backwards a feature uh, for you? Do you like that it's easier to load either way, or do you dislike that you have the liability of loading backwards like this in the magazine functioning flawlessly. That's honestly, I think at this point, the biggest difference other than the open window between talons and katanas. And I think that it's interesting. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Make sure that you upvote, downvote some of those comments if somebody has really good insight. I think that could be a valuable discussion rather than just like, I like red better or I'm dumb and think blue is cool. Um, let's uh, dial this down just a little bit, pull this forward and uh, see if we can't do a little bit of a better job on our opponent theoretically 80 feet away. That one pulled way right and it was not my fault. Perfect, perfect, slightly off, slightly off. 
Okay, so that's about 50% downrange, and that's certainly not bad. Overall, handsome blaster, handsome price point. I actually really like that the serial number is on the blaster. I don't know how uh, expensive that is versus um, putting a certificate of authenticity in the box. I don't think that one is better than the other explicitly. I love my COA in the background of my videos, but I really dig that uh, we'll always have the Mach 5 over here. Now, uh, if cool numbers are your thing, and if, you haven't already hit up the pre-order link or the order link down in the description box below and you'd like one of these sooner than pretty much anybody else on the planet and again cool numbers are your thing. I can't use blue blasters. Not that there's anything wrong with blue blasters, I just like being on the winning team. Um, but uh, this is serial number 42, I opened it up. If you're a gentleman of taste as I am, then you know that that's actually the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Uh, this is a full kit, it's got everything that mine just got out of the box. Uh, it's a pretty good looking blaster, like I said, and I am giving this one away live on Twitch this Sunday, the 5th of June, 2020, and it could be a fun little present for you. It will be going to a lucky Twitch subscriber. Make sure that you come by, check it out. If you happen to have Amazon Prime, that is a free entry. But I've been streaming every night on Twitch, uh, more or less during quarantine. I took a brief break uh, for my mental health, but I really, really love streaming. I've got an amazing audience over on Twitch and I want to give back to some of them. But I would hate it if you guys missed out and I'd love it if you joined my little stream fam. So uh, if the Game Face Prime is interesting to you and you don't mind being the captain of Team Blue, uh, this could be yours this Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, whatever time that is for you. I'll uh, I'll ship it anywhere, guys. It's not that big a deal. Uh, I want to pay it forward. I want to show the love. Uh, thank you guys so very much for watching. Let me know what you think of this. If you're really into it, you can pick one up in the description box down below. It's all the fun of the CETA platform minus a couple of the flaws, and I think that it's a much cheaper entry than, say, a DZP, even if it does shoot significantly softer than one. I think that it's uh, pretty cool. It's filling a very interesting space right now now but that said if the nexus is what we think it is and if you haven't seen that video already you should check that one out as well then uh everything could be up for grabs who knows it's anybody's game lots of crazy stuff happening in this space and i'm just so so thrilled to be nerfing in a time where companies are actually making blasters for us how awesome is that in a world where hasbro seems to be offering worse and worse offerings that their competition seems to be really stepping it up i've seen you guys' comments i know that you guys agree with me it's super awesome great time for competitive blasting and as soon as we can actually start holding tournaments and actually start nerfing again i know that we're all just going to have an absolute high fps blast so i'll see you guys over on twitch right right much love nerf on drag out ah!